Let's look at making custom base map styles using Mapbox. Specifically, I'll be using Mapbox Studio for doing this. And the end result, once we make a base map, is that you'll be able to use that in various other applications where you make maps, whether that's a GIS um, web mapping platform like Cardo, or making your own web map with JavaScript. So from the home page, um, if I did not already have an account, I would create one here and log in. Uh, I already have an account, so I'm going to go to Studio, which is where styles are created in Mapbox, and I'll create a new style. Um, there are a variety of templates you can use here, um, such as monochrome and different variations on monochrome um, that would be worth looking at as a basis for whatever map you're working on. For our purposes right now, I'm just going to use basic, which is kind of a nice, um, it's, uh, it's a relatively complete uh, map with a lot of different kinds of features that will give us a chance to look at um, how you style a variety of features. So I'm going to start with that and click customize and this is going to load the style here in this web application called Mapbox Studio and um, you're probably starting here in Paris. I could go somewhere else. I could search for somewhere else, uh, such as New York, or I could just move the map there on my own. And uh, I think it helps here to have something in mind that you're trying to accomplish. And in my case, I think I'm going to try to show uh, where parks are, try to emphasize parks. So um, perhaps I will try to um, bring into, um, I would try to elevate the importance of parks and pull down the importance of everything else. So um, try to mute other colors and make the parks stand out a little bit more. And um, what we see here, this is, this is the base map that I'm working on. And as I make changes to it, you, you'll see those changes. Um, and the important, there are a couple of important features to keep in mind um, terminology wise when you're talking about Mapbox. And um, so one of these is pretty new components. And I'm going to get into exactly what each of those are in turn, but let's start with components. So by default, over here on the left, you will see components. And um, these are groups of different uh, data layers that are styled in a similar enough way that you can um, group some of those styling decisions together into one place and make all those changes at once. Um, so for example, um, this land and water covers land use. Um, and if I turned off land use, then you'll see there's a lot less going on on this map now. Um, not only did I get rid of parks, but I got rid of, uh, you can see airports more or less disappeared, um, cemeteries, hospitals, other things like that disappeared. Um, so I probably want to keep the land use on, but if you didn't if you weren't interested in land use, that's a nice, easy way to just turn all of those off. Um, also, here under the water style, it's a little subtle from this um, vantage point, but if I zoom in a bit um, to this uh, part of the beach on Staten Island, if I turn that back to simple, uh, you'll see there's no, um, the contrast here on the edge of the beach is uh, much less noticeable with simple. So um, this is a place, these components also have the colors and the colors um, are nice because even if 
water features span um, many data layers, you can change the colors for all of them right here. So for example, I want all my water to look the same way, um, whether it's an ocean or a lake, um, and I can do that here. I clicked on the color for water, and now I can change it to whatever I want. Maybe I want to tone it down a little bit, and you can see here in the color picker, the old color and the new one. If I didn't like that, I could reset it, um, or I could go back and select it again. All right? And you'll see all of the water colors changed. Okay, so that's that is um, the first uh, big piece of terminology that you want to know about when you're working with Mapbox components. Components are places where you can make big changes across your entire map. Components are made up of layers, and that tab here over on the left will show you all of the layers. So, uh, for example, we can look down here. Um, there are multiple water layers, um, and the nice thing about components is that the components actually group those layers. Components are made up of at least one layer, sometimes 10, sometimes 20, um, and the when you change a component, it changes all of the layers within that component. Um, and a nice way to see that, if we went back to land and water, under more options, I can click view layers, and it will highlight the layers that are part of that. So we can see there are eight layers, looking up here, there are eight layers part of the land, um, land and water component. And when you're making changes to this component, land and water, it's making changes to all of those layers. Okay, so um, what I want to do is um, I want to play around with the coloring for parks. I want to make parks more, I want to make them pop a little bit more. So one thing I might do is look here under the colors for land and water, and I might try changing this a little bit. And then, um, you see that uh, the colors are changing both cemeteries and parks. Um, so when I make changes, you see that the cemeteries are getting, um, it's like a, it's a more orangish color than the green that I'm making the parks. Um, and that probably means that uh, somehow the layers in this component are basing those colors off of each other. And um, if I want to just change the park color, then I probably need to look at the layer itself that that is a part of, because all I really have access to is what you see when it comes to the components. So to find out which layer, exactly which layer I'm looking at, for example, with this green fill, I will click on the map itself. When you click on the map itself, that brings up all of the matching components and all of the matching layers. If you do this in a place where there's more going on, uh, say if I click right on Red Hook, you will see multiple components come up, including place labels, but also the road network because I clicked near enough a road. Um, so don't let that confuse you. Um, if you're really trying to isolate one thing, you might need to zoom in more or click a specific part of that feature to make sure that you just get that feature. Um, but going back to the parks, um, I'm going to look at the layers and I'm going to look at the land use layer. The land use layer comes up over on the left. And here you have more settings than you do with the components. Components are limited. Um, they're powerful because you're changing values on many layers, but you can't ch make all of the changes that you might possibly want to make. And in order to do that, you might need to come into the layer itself 
and um, you'll see that there are little locks next to all of these properties that I might want to change. And that's because it's part of a component. When you're part of a component, um, these settings are overridden by the component, and we can change that. We can say, actually, this layer, ignore what is in the component for it. I got it. So I just unlocked it. I'm overriding this value for this component now. And now I can dig into the colors a little bit. And you can see um, it's a little bit intricate. There are many colors here. And you can see one is for zoom 15 and one is for zoom 16. Um, that is because the colors are changing um, pretty subtly, I would say. But the, ch the colors do change between those zoom levels. So at zoom level 15, we have these values. If you come down to zoom level 16, you'll see these values. Um, and the zoom level, you could change this. You could make this later on um, if you wanted to. Again, these changes are pretty subtle here, so you, you might not see a big difference. And um, you can see looking here which zoom level you're at. Now I'm at 12.1. You can also see that here in the top near the middle of the screen um, where it shows the zoom and the center of the map, the current map view. Great. So I'm going to deal with the color values at zoom 15. And I might, um, I might make the park stick out a little bit more. And um, I'm doing this uh, so that I can see it very clearly when I'm zoomed out a little bit more. So why don't I look at it from a more zoomed out point of view? Um, maybe that's a little too emphasized. I might turn that down a little bit. OK, I can see my parks really well. The cemeteries, um, and if I wasn't sure if this was a cemetery, I might zoom into it to see um, the point the, the point label. In this case, it's a cemetery. Um, and the cemeteries are also styled here in this, um, in this layer. And I might either, I might do one of two things. I might turn the opacity down a bit and let these colors blend in a little bit more with the base map so that they're less emphasized. I might also work on muting the color itself on top of the opacity. And now you can see, you can see that there are cemeteries, but you can't, they're not um, as distracting. I can mostly see the parks. And that's, that's more what I'm going for here. All right, so, <clears throat> so we've talked about components. We've talked about how these are groups of layers. We've talked about layers, which mostly belong to components, but you can override those. Um, the other big, um, the other big thing that you should know about when it comes to making styles with Mapbox Studio is features. So like any GIS, really, a layer um, is made up of features. And these are shapes. These are shapes that have data behind them. When you look at a park like Prospect Park, that's a polygon or a multi-polygon. And it has some data behind it. At the very least, it has the name of the park. It probably has some other things, such as the fact that it is a park. Right? And uh, sometimes it's really helpful to be able to see exactly what data exists in that feature. So uh, the way I'll do this is I'll select land use, I'll select the layer that it's on, and I will go over to select data. By default, you're on style. I'm going to go to select data. And now we can see 
This is everything on the land use layer. All of the green highlighted things. This is kind of an x-ray view of the layer. All of the green are features on this layer that are appearing. All of the reddish features are features that were filtered out. So they exist on the land use layer, but they're not appearing. And you can kind of see that if you keep an eye on these red ones here. If I go back to style, you shouldn't see anything for them. They're on the layer, but they're hidden right now. And if I zoomed into it, it might eventually turn green. It might be the kind of thing that only shows up at certain, um, at certain zoom levels. Apparently not. If I click on it, we'll see, oh, land use parking, for whatever reason, this layer is not um, showing parking areas. Okay, so that's why it's not showing up. If we were interested in seeing parking, um, we could do that. We could unfilter the parking areas if I'm interested in parks and parking for some reason. The way you would do that is going back to select data. You can change these filters um, but you can't change these filters because it's part of a component. So, um, so I'm going to walk through taking this out of the component that it's a part of, the land use layer itself. I'm going to just take it out of the component, and then we can change the filter, and then we can show the parking areas. So if I go back to... actually, I want to look at the layer. <sighs> All right, I want to look at the land use layer. Um, and you, I think you might have seen there that I typically am not going to search through here. Sometimes there are many more layers than this, and it's pretty slow looking through these one by one to find the one you're looking for. I think it's always easier to click on the feature that you're looking at. All right, and when you are looking at it, it will tell you which component it's a part of, if any. It's part of the land and water component. And when you've gotten to a point where components got you as far as they're going to get you, they've been really useful, but they've, um, they've outstayed their welcome. I want to get rid of this one component. The other ones will stay there. You, use, you do what is called ejecting it. I'm going to eject the component. I will no longer be able to edit these layers as a component. I'll have to edit them as their own layers. And you can't undo this, so you have to be pretty sure that you want to. Um, so I'm going to go back to the land use layer now. And now when I go to select data and I go to filter, I am allowed to make changes. I'm going to filter so that the parking will show up. And the way I'll do that is I can click on this formula this condition for the filter. And um, what I was finding earlier is that um, there's an issue keeping me from directly editing this, uh, this condition. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to try to remember that exactly what is showing up here, park, airport, pitch, sand, school, hospital. Okay, so I'm going to delete that filter, and now you should see everything showing up as green. And I will create a new filter, filtering on the class. If I need to double check that, you can click on any of the features and see what the class is, um, what the attributes are, rather. And I'm going to create the filter on class, where, um, where the class is any of these things. I think I'm getting most of them. Oh yes, I wanted parking also, just so we could see parking. And I think that I think that got all of the things I wanted to see. And now when I style, um, you'll see that the parking doesn't show up very pronounced, which is fine. Um, and the way it's showing up at all 
is that there is a fallback value here. If I didn't want to use the fallback value, I didn't want to say, well, if none of those other things match, use this. If I wanted to add a specific filter for that parking area, I can click add another condition where the class is parking. And I'll probably do something gray, something, something unobtrusive, but um, gray is often used for parking, so I think um, that will be fine. It might be a little bit more pronounced than I want it to be. I might tone that down some. And I'm seeing that I, um, I think I might have turned on too many of those classes from the land use, so I'll probably go back to select data and see exactly what I'm looking at here. I think I'm looking at some wood. I might want to get rid of the wood, um, and that might tone things down a little bit. Okay, that looks a little bit more the way I expected it to look. Great. So, uh, as you might um, as you might have guessed, there are a lot of labels. There are a lot of roads. There's a lot going on here. You could spend a whole lot more time working through making your perfect base map. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to um, point out two more things. One is that there is a history button here. This history button nicely summarizes all the things that you've done and you can go back in time. So I could change the color, that filter on land use. And um, I'm not sure what happened there. It's not usually that difficult um, to undo things, but now my history is going to be empty because I had to refresh the page. Um, so there is undo. It's an option to you while you're working on Mapbox styles. The other thing I'll point out is uh, you click this publish button. When you do, you can see the original version of the map and the one that you're working on that you will be publishing. I did not mean to refresh there. I um, That was just a mouse issue. Uh, but you can move around on this map and see the changes um, either by doing this or by moving the map itself. And I'll hit publish. And now if you want to use this base map, you will probably follow some other directions that I will be giving you shortly.